Welcome to Show Studio. It's the last day of Paris Fashion Week, but it's such an exciting day. I think it's the day that everyone's been looking forward to all season, because um, it's the debut of Nicolas Gessier at Louis Vuitton. Um, I've got an incredible set of panellists with me here to talk about what we're seeing at Vuitton at the moment, to talk about what makes Gessier such an incredible designer, and also to chat a little bit about what's impressed us this season and in Paris. But before we begin, I'll let you guys introduce yourselves, starting with you, Mima. Good morning, I'm Mima Viglitz and I'm a creative consultant. Hi, I'm Tamsin Blanchard, I'm the style director of The Telegraph magazine. I'm Aurel Cullen, I'm a fashion curator at the Victoria and Albert Museum. I'm Peter Jensen and I'm a fashion designer. I want to start by picking on you, Aurel, because you were here for Mark's last show, as we were saying just before we went live, we did a panel when it was Mark Jacobs' kind of closing show at Vuitton. Are you excited about this new change for the house? What's your take on it all? Absolutely. I mean, I think it's, it's really interesting. We were saying earlier that Vuitton, in a way, is a blank canvas. And mm -hmm. I think it's so exciting that Nicolas Gesquier is the designer that they've chosen to um, come in after Mark. Because, you know, Mark did do a fantastic 10 years. It was very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and this is just sort of a completely new start, sort of wiping the slate. Um, mm -hmm. We can sort of get a, an idea here of the space which is really clean. Very <laughs> just yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, just really excited to, because, as we were saying again, you know, we, what's he going to do? It's, mm. you know, so, yeah. It's interesting that you say black canvas because I think it's quite, we talked about this a lot on the Mark panel, the fact that Mark, you know, it was Louis Vuitton ready to wear and I think it's very easy to think about kind of a, a heritage of the house but in that respect, it's going to be really interesting to see a designer work without a ready to wear archive in that sense. Are we quite excited? Do we expect him to do something very new because of that? Well, I, when I woke up this morning, I was thinking about that exactly. I mean, there's no... Uh, Nicolai has worked with the archives of Balenciaga so much mm. and so well. And, I, and before, you know, he worked with someone like Gautier, where there is a strong DNA, mm. a strong image. And I was thinking, what the hell is he going to do? <laughs> because we toys, you know, it's trunks. It's, I mean, there is a strong DNA, the trunk, the travel, the whatever, the monograms everywhere. But... Uh, I am so excited, I'm so looking forward because I have no idea, as you were saying, it's a white canvas, mm. it can do anything, mm. it's mm. fantastic. Mm. What makes him such an influential designer? Tamlin, you follow, have you followed his career with a lot um, of interest? Yeah, I have. I mean, he's one of those designers that you never quite know what he's going to do, mm. which always makes the shows really, really exciting. And you know that whatever he's going to do will just have the most amazing technical you know, genius behind mm. it. Um, so I think, that, and, and I mean, he's a proper, proper designer. Mm. Um, so I think that's what makes him mm. exciting. I think the thing with Louis Vuitton as well is that you you forget that when Mark took over in '97, that actually there was no ready to wear. Yeah. There were no shoes. You know, there were just trunks. Mm. And I think so. It's only it's a really new brand, really Vuitton in terms of fashion. Um, so I think he's got a really you know exciting. Uh, a brief ahead of him, really. Yeah. Can I say something? Maybe sorry, and then I let you. <laughs> <laughs> the first thing that Mark did was to take the monogram and 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 make it um, pastel colors and patent leather. Mm. I don't know. I mean, mm. maybe you're too young. Mm -hmm. Ninety eight, ninety nine, and that was the very first thing mm -hmm. he did. And then he mm. did that show with all those girls in the same mm. little like nurse dress mm, which was yeah. very good and in different color and that was quite genius because it gave it the Marc Jacobs mm. look that like mm. it or not but that's what he mm. did and I'm wondering will Nicola did something did his take on the monogram or mm. Mm. will it it's not I don't know mm. so yeah. that's what's going to I be I mean it's got to be commercial I mean yeah. that's the thing with Vuitton in a way that Balenciaga was so much n more niche before mm. it was a you know it was a sort of fashion insiders brand Whereas Vuitton, it's got to be... It's a three billion brand. Mm. Yeah. Mm. But it's interesting to look at Mark's shows and the clothes that he had on the catwalk and then compare them to what you see in the stores. Yeah. And I think there is that yeah. little bit of leeway, isn't there, that you can be more creative. And certainly with Nicolas Gasquier, mm. looking at even what he did at Balenciaga, the show pieces are just incredible. They're mm. so... The construction mm. is kind of mad in a way. And, you know, obviously that... Everything is slightly... Um, you know, adjusted for the, the retail. Mm. Um, but I think with Louis Vuitton it, and Marc Jacobs, it was definitely Marc at Louis Vuitton. Mm. And, you know, hopefully this is it's going to be at mm. Louis Vuitton. Yeah. Mm. So. It's interesting, you said he's, he's a proper designer. Do you kind of agree with that, Peter? He's, is he a designer's designer in some respect? He's someone that 
you work in fashion, you kind of fetishise a bit because he loves fabric so much and he's... Yes, I suppose he is. I suppose he is someone that you look to and, and see what he does. And, and uh, you know, I think that he has a really strong team behind him that works very well with, with his visions and, and what he tries to put out there. So, and, I, you know, I think that that's very important that you've got a, a strong team behind you that can work out what it is that goes on inside your head. And, and he seems to have a perfect kind of balance to do that, you know, with Balenciaga and probably now with this. I, I think this would be interesting because it's probably going to be pared down much more sort of like, you know, it's a new fresh start and, and it's a French, is he French designer? He is French, mm. yes. <laughs> he is yes. a French designer, <laughs> which, which I think is interesting, you know, that, that a French house is having a French mm. design. I think mm. that that's kind of refreshing in a that's weird a kind point. of way, yeah. Mm. yeah. Mm. It's a very good point, I didn't think about that. Mm. Yeah. It hasn't been like yeah. that for a while. Yeah. 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 The French True. must be rejoicing, must yeah. they? Yeah, they'll be very excited. Yeah. 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 Let's talk um, a little bit just about about the way in which um, sort of Gasquier has influenced and changed fashion because I think you know it's he's been such a sort of huge force and it's very easy to be like oh he's so fantastic but then to pinpoint what he did that felt so new what's his biggest influence been do we think and it's a really hard question but well I think one one thing that Nicholas has been a master of was to reinvent I mean to let me put it like this, to create something really new, shape-wise, material-wise, fabrics-wise, but always relevant. Mm. So something that was futuristic, yet that could mm. fit into the world of mm. the moment, so mm. that women could actually wear, because we were talking about the commercial and the show, but actually he always wanted the mm -hmm. show to be in the stores. Mm -hmm. So then there was the capsule and there was the archives with the dates of the year, whatever. But the show was in the stores, and believe it or not, mm -hmm. even if the ready-to-wear was selling probably less than the Laria bag, mm -hmm. the show was selling more mm -hmm. than the capsule because the Balenciaga woman wanted mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And so he was futuristic in his approach of, you know, like those skinny arms that people couldn't put the jackets on because mm -hmm. actually the, the, the arm wouldn't get in mm -hmm. even if you were a thin woman. But then it was his way of, you know, elongating the silhouette, etc. But it was always relevant. Mm. He wanted women to wear his clothes. And mm. so it wasn't a theatrical thing. And that's what, for me, was the strongest point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's very much a silhouette thing with him, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And it's about creating volume and, and yeah, and I think the, the way that he uses new uh, fabrics and textiles in, the, in his work. Um, mm. But also, I mean, I think the lariat, I mean, the, the bags, you know the Balenciaga bags. He's mm. been genius at, mm. at, you know, creating this desire around accessories, mm. um, which I obviously. Yeah, it's a good point that you mentioned that because well, I think when the appointment was first made, people were like, "Oh, he's such a kind of creative, conceptual designer." But actually, it's it's worth noting that he's also you know incredibly good at making an it accessory, which is obviously going to be a huge part of of what happens at Beaton. It's interesting to talk a little bit about this commercial thing because that we've talked about it on a previous panel, but that. Um, incredible interview he gave with System Magazine when he left Balenciaga and he talked about his frustration at not being given the opportunity to kind of commercialise new pieces that he was designing and he said that you know Balenciaga was resting too much on those pieces that were already a success. Is that something we're like, excited about to see at Beaton, the fact that he can hopefully be given that opportunity to come up with something new but then see that go through and be worn and sold? Do you think they'll be more accepting of that than Balenciaga? You ask me. <laughs> I know a little bit too much, so I don't want to go back to yeah. what you said. Um, I, I know this company also a little bit, but a little bit less. There's the, the potential, the financial potential is endless. Mm. We're talking Chanel style financial potential, so mm. we can do mm. a lot. Mm. And so probably it will be freer in that. But you know, Vuitton is it's like two different companies. There is one uh, side of the company that takes care of the bulk, you know, mm. the, the monogram and the AP leather, all the classics. And then there is what is done for the catwalk that not always goes into the commercial mm. side. So I don't know. I don't know if he has mm. put that in the contract that he wants his staff to. I mean, mm. Nicholas can create the new Lariat. He mm. can, but he didn't for Balenciaga in a way. You know, the Lariat has been until the Phoebe Philo wing bag now. Mm. It's been the bag, mm. the most mm. sold, but mm. nothing mm. else happened after mm. that. So didn't he want to or didn't have a new idea? 
So mm, it's, it's yeah. I don't know, but mm. he has a huge team of mm. bike designers there that maybe can design his vision. As you said, you know, there is a lot, there are a lot of people behind. Honestly, I don't know. I don't want to discuss the Balenciaga thing though. Mm. I'd okay. rather not. That's fair enough. <laughs> Do we find that frustrating with designers? Because like, since you mentioned the laureate and you say that, you know, he didn't create another bag after that but then you wonder you know was he given the opportunity to be able to or do do we think occasionally with luxury houses they rest too much when there's a hit that they'll kind of keep reproducing no i think the problem was that they wanted a new larry and they wanted because the the laria was probably decreasing in sales after Mm. how many years Mm. Mm. i mean i think Mm. one of the i mean did you see the Alexander Wang show the other day yeah, from Balenciaga? They came out with four bags yeah. in each yeah. hand. Yeah. I'm mm, not yeah. commenting that. What did we think <laughs> of that? Because I guess that's kind of similar to... But you yeah. can, come on guys. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I hope this doesn't, I hope this doesn't <laughs> turn into <laughs> 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 I hope this doesn't turn into a bag show. Bag fair. I don't yeah. think you will do yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I think Mark Jacobs, <laughs> towards the end, started to go back to him again, but he was moving away from the bags yes. um, in the shows, and he was sort of trying to get away from that. So, mm. And I think, you know, there's room for that in retail, and it's such a huge company, as you were saying. Yeah, um, you know, yeah. Mm. so I think mm. they're, you know, they seem to be fine with that. Mm. Um, it's interesting, they have the, the new foundation opening up, and the Frank Gehry yeah. building. Is it this year that yeah, it's opening? Yeah, currently. Right? So in the Bois de Boulogne. So that, you know, it's such a vast kind of mm. thing in the mm. conglomeration. So, um, it's, it's interesting to me that you mentioned that kind of vast thing because it takes me to something that Mark did, which was this real link between fashion and art that's kind of come through in, in Vuitton sponsorships and, and the work that they do sort of in, you know, whether it's putting on exhibitions, et cetera, et cetera. Do we hope that that's something that Gasquier will, con- will continue, or do we think that will be part of Mark's tenure, that kind of art meets fashion thing that we saw there a lot, especially with you know, the collaborations that he was doing? I think Vuitton want to keep pushing that. That's sort of their angle, isn't mm-hmm. it? You know, art and fashion. Yeah. But it depends on how he feels with that and how, you know, I mean, the potential is there, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry, thanks. Ooh, will nice will we have the real music of the show? Yeah. yeah. Good. I really hope it's not this pixelated. Okay, I'm, I'm a little bit nervous. <laughs> I'm nervous as well. I think as it starts, I just, I've got his show notes that was left on every seat. So it said, today is a new day, a big day. You're about to witness my first fashion show for Louis Vuitton. Words cannot express exactly how I'm feeling at this moment. Above all, immense joy at being here and the knowledge that my stylistic expression is at one with the Louis Vuitton philosophy, the proud legacy, the inspiring history that looks to the future and to the world. The quest for authenticity and innovation, the desire for timelessness. Does not every designer ultimately seek to create something timeless? I salute the work of Mark Jacobs, whose legacy I wholeheartedly hope to honour, and I thank you for being here to share this moment with me. Thanks to all of you who have helped me to tell this new story and who make Louis Vuitton what it is, and especially to those who work with me. Thanks to everyone here on this day, this morning, right now. That's nice. Mm. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah. Nice of him to acknowledge Did Mark. Yeah, really yeah. nice. Did you see Mark. the first model who it was? Fraser? Yeah. She hasn't been seen for long. So we did get the bags, actually. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tiny yeah. little bag. Yeah. 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 Little wheat on trunk. Yeah. He always does really amazing jewellery as well. That was such a big part of Balenciaga and you know, to see like that one earring that looked really incredible as well. Maggie Riser, is it? It's still very elongated silhouette. Yeah. <laughs> one thing that I recognize is that he always has one thing in a show and then he, you know, there's not many stories. There's always yeah. mm-hmm. one story that it's repeated and... Mm-hmm. It's Those, that footwear is going to become like the itch shoe though. You can yeah. see that yeah. already. And then a skirt. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, look at that. I can see it everywhere already. It's very clean, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. See, that's the, what's the name, the Alma bag? Mm. That's, a, a, that's a re-see of the Alma bag, yeah. did you notice? It, with the, yeah. You know, one of their classic, yeah, but done in a modern way, level. so he's doing yeah. it. Yeah. It's quite, quite 60s. Mm. Very 60s, yeah. Mm. Quite surprising. Yeah, I wasn't expecting it to feel so sort of of an era. Yeah, it just feel, it feels quite retro to me. I wish we could see the fabrics. Mm. 
it feels more in tune to what Kim Jones is doing there as well. I think yeah, it's quite interesting yeah. that kind of. I'm interested to see now it's just, yeah, how that'll sort of. Because it felt very separate before mm. with Mark. I'm a little bit biased here, but I really love it. <laughs> <laughs> What's your take on it, Peter? I, I, it's funny because I. Sorry. Be <laughs> 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 silent. No, what were you going to say? <laughs> That I see a lot of Nicolas Jusquier in here, yeah. mm. but in a, in a, I don't, I, I mean to say in a Witton way, it's ridiculous because what does that mean? But what I, what I'm impressed with is that the difference between balance, what he did for Balenciaga and this, mm. yeah. you, s it, you see that he made an effort too. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I'm it's like yeah. sort of there's something classic about it, but it's still, you know, it's Nicolas Jusquier's take on classic. In yeah. A way, I think with these really nice leathers and just a really simple kind of. Pieces. I mean, that's the only print, isn't it, so <coughs> far? There was a dress, a skirt in that mm. floral print before. Mm. And mm. You impressed, Peter? Yes. Well, I don't. Um, yes, I suppose. I mean, it's. It's. I think it's one of those collections that will grow with you in time. Not. Not sort of like immediate thinking that this is absolutely incredibly amazing. Mm. But. But again, I think it looks really French. I think it looks really Cat Catherine Deneuve in mm. the sixties, mm -hmm. and it's very sort of have that vibe. And maybe mm. that is a good thing to move away from something that's more staged in sort of like yeah. you have to you know digest a lot of things that goes on on the stage maybe it is just more about the clothing mm. the bags and the shoes which mm. is kind of nice i think it's nice that it's getting back to that focus point mm. in fashion mm. uh, which also was the mark jacob show in new york this season which was very pared down and yeah, just up yeah I think that it's a really interesting point that you make there because I think that feels slightly more luxurious, doesn't it? There's something that kind of shocks you so much. We were talking about Chanel before we went live, and that's very much kind of you either love it or you hate it. You make yeah. it instantly. But this feels a little bit more. You said it will grow with you, and it feels like you'll revisit it, and yeah, the way that it impresses you will change as the season develops. And right. that's always a little bit more exciting, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. It is quite rock and roll, though, and. Um, mm. And I like that because one thing that we thought wasn't, even with Mark Jacobs uh, towards the end, was rock and roll. Mm. And especially, as you were saying, what then you would see in the stores, mm. it was a little bit more bourgeois. Mm -hmm. and, and, but this is, this is very, I don't know, it feels very modern to me. Mm -hmm. It's quite, um, I mean, they're real clothes, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. It's they part are. part of the whole reality check, kind of, you know, this new, the new, uh, you know, Phoebe, mm -hmm. um, you know, Raph. Mm. It's part of this whole piece of real clothes to wear. Mm. Mm. But it's I like that little sort of touch of fetish, you know, yeah. that, that's there. Mm. Well, that's very simple, but these kind of, this high shine kind mm. of leathers. And mm. it's, it's a bit frustrating that we don't see what Yeah, you want to touch it, don't you? There's a lot of leather, I think. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting, that kind of slightly grungy element mm. to it, which feels very modern. Yeah. Maybe slightly San Juan. Yeah. I didn't dare. Say. <laughs> I didn't, everyone was thinking was it, but really really was so keeping the name <laughs> heady to my name because they would hate. Like that to look, be yeah. there. If you just saw that, but there is a little bit of that yes. in modernity. But you know, yeah. they are the, yeah. probably the most creative yeah. designers. Yeah. You know, yeah. for young people. Like in that it's speaking to a similar woman. Yeah. Yeah. A similar woman, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. They speaking the same language with a different accent. Mm. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I say it like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when you see a look like that, yeah. you could could be off the send of a runway. But it's interesting. I want to pick up a bit more on that idea that you were talking about of kind of that real clothes thing, because it feels like that gets quite a lot of flack. That maybe Saint a good example of that. You know, when anything looks too real, the fashion press seem to find that quite mm. distressing. Mm. What do you think? What do you think about that? I think that? they're just going to have to get a grip and just get with it because this is <laughs> this is how it is. Yeah. And you know, I mean, it's it's easy to write about a Chanel show because mm. there's so much going on and there's so many distractions. And sometimes it's quite hard to write about a show that's just about really, you clothes. know, finely honed clothes. Mm. Um, so, mm. but I think this is the way forward, isn't it? Mm. It's not going to change. I think we have to start imagining that commercial is not a dirty world, and uh, when the economy is exploding and these brands are having huge expenses, they also need to sell real clothes. So mm. please <laughs> give me some yeah. real clothes that I want to buy because I want to feel fashionable and rock and roll and modern or bourgeois, yeah. whatever I am. Mm. But give me something that I can 
buy and afford. The problem with fashion, I don't know what you guys think, but it's becoming really, really expensive. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. going out of control yeah, because of this luxurious material. Mm -hmm. So then it's the high street that's going to copy and win. I mean, that's a little bit of a pity. Mm -hmm. It's becoming unapproachable, no? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's but what do they do about that? I don't know. What do they do? Yeah. Give me the answer. <laughs> 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 Find some more money. I have no idea. I mean, it's, it's just, yeah. Prices goes up yeah, I mean in yeah, terms yeah. of manufacturers yeah, and, and everything. Yeah, it's, it's really it's, it's yeah. expensive. Incredible. But but you're being pushed to to have some prices that's approachable. Mm. So it's it's a very mm. hard mm. situation. When I saw the Valentino yeah. show yesterday, I decided I need to be very rich by next season. <laughs> <laughs> <I wanted to. laughs> yeah. um, it seems to me it's like the housing market. It's just got overinflated yeah. fashion prices, and you know the fact is there's a lot of very very rich people who. Mm. Yeah, price. I think it's important. There are houses who are just rising their prices, mm. you know, just taking them up. But it's interesting because we talked with such enthusiasm at the start of this discussion about things like fabric innovation and, and some of the behind the scenes stuff, if, if you can put it like that, that Nicolas Gesquier has done. And it's, it's difficult in a way because we, we love that. We love those new fabrics. We love that new development. That costs money. So I guess there's that kind of... Exactly. Yeah. That's, mm. that's a little bit the, the problem, you know. It's, mm. And fashion is going... A little bit, it's distancing itself from demo democracy yeah. in a way mm -hmm. because it's, you know, with all the fur yeah. and the mm -hmm. leather and the yeah. whatever sequins that we've seen, it's far from being for yeah. everybody. Mm -hmm. But it's so yummy, you know, mm -hmm. you, you, you want it all. Mm -hmm. Yummy, I love that. Yeah, it is, this is quite yummy to me. But, um. <laughs> but the fact is, the girls that, you, that want to be wearing Sanron or new Louis Vuitton, mm. you know, they're, they're 20 somethings mm. and how, you know, how do they afford, you know, thousands of they pounds? They can't. Mm. No. And I think that's, I think that's really sad. <laughs> well, it is very sad, yeah. yeah. But what do you do? And it plays <laughs> into the high street's hands in some respect because it means then that you've got this huge audience that want to wear it <coughs> and then it makes it even more kind of... It was really good. Yeah, it was really good. Mm. I think it was good, but it surprised me. It was a bit underwhelming, I'm sorry, I'm a bit underwhelming. Yeah, do you but remember the first show, Hedy for Saint Laurent, we were all like, what was that, you know, and now it's one of yeah. the biggest success yeah. Yeah. commercially yeah. and press-wise, yeah. and I think this is what was more overwhelming than that, but mm -hmm. you can't start with a, you know, with yeah. a firework. Yeah. You have to yeah. start by yeah. respecting, mm -hmm. as he said in mm -hmm. his text, you know, you cannot start and say, oh, I know yeah. what to do. Mm. It's very confident. It's very it? confident. Yeah. Mm. Mm. What's your take on it? Are you, are you impressed by it? Or you? Yeah, I do. I like it. There's something, it's strong, as you were saying, I think it will definitely grow on us. There's something sort of, um, something quiet about it. Mm. You know, I think it's, he's pitched it very cleverly. I think, mm. yes, it's not kind of, people aren't going, my God, you know, what is that? But I think absolutely afterwards, the more we see the images, the more mm. I think that's, I think it was perched, it was sort of pitched perfectly for mm. this, mm. you know, for Vuitton. I think it will absolutely work for them. Mm. Um, but yeah, you can absolutely see Gesquier's hand at work there. It's completely. So be it's interesting because a word that we said a lot before we saw the show was futuristic. And you know, we, we looked to him for that in some ways, but this doesn't this feel like that at all. No. Are we surprised? It was very modern though, but yeah, not futuristic. Yeah, no, there was a real nostalgia to it, I felt. I don't think you can design futuristic crazy for a three billion or four billion bra machine. I think you also have to know who you work for. Mm -hmm. This is not Balenciaga, mm -hmm. it's not niche, mm -hmm. but I he think. Sh he showed he's a versatile designer, he can turn his hand to something else. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I guess you want yeah. to see that. We wouldn't have wanted to just see what he did at Balenciaga, yeah. we done. No. It's interesting because before, Ariel, you said, you know, it's Nicholas Gethgear for Louis Vuitton and there's this idea, you know, that. But to me, this feels like Louis Vuitton, and he just happens to be the. But there designer. is something. I mean, there's the sequin, the first dose, you know, yeah. the sequin color changing things. Mark did something like that. He did jackets like that in mm. 2000, maybe yeah. the year I was working there. I have a jacket with that. So I think there is a respect to Mark and what yeah. he did because he knows that Mark built mm. the ready to wear mm. of Louis Vuitton, mm. the first mm. one. And so, in a way, there is a tiny bit of archival. I mm. think. No, I think know, definitely that there is something news. about yeah. what Mark mm. did, yeah. and there is some respect, and yeah. um, it's his own take to that. Mm. Mm. Because I guess if we were trying to, to talk about the Louis, Louis Vuitton ready to wear sort of DNA, what do we expect from it? It's very hard to say, isn't yeah. it? 
Well, it's nice to see those tiny wasp waists and those elongated kind of trouser silhouettes. That That's his way. Guess, yeah, yeah. That's his way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And the very low cut necklines mm, of it. Yeah. We all seem slightly surprised by it. <laughs> I'm sure you, you, you now want to go and look at it on the rail. Yeah. Because I'm sure, yeah. you know, the fabric is yes. amazing. And yeah, yeah. They're constructed very yeah, incredible. Oh, he looks so happy. He must be so emotional. <laughs> he looks very at home there. Yeah, he does. Well, as you say, he's mature and self-assured, and but he probably was freaking out last <laughs> night. <I think. laughs> They're human being, and uh, yeah. you know, it's very difficult to come after Marc Jacobs, but it's even more difficult to come after Marc Jacobs after having been Nicolas Jusquier for Balenciaga. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. do you see what I'm trying to say? Yeah, yeah and of course it's their job and yeah. they're very well paid and, yeah. Yeah. and there's yeah. worse in life, yeah. but mm. what do you really do? Yeah. Yeah. You're yeah. a designer, tell me, I mean, how does, it, <laughs> how does it happen in your mind? How do you solve the creative mm. problem when you come after Marc Jacobs and you come after being, having been Nicolas for Balenciaga? It's <laughs> well, not easy. Yeah, no, it's not. I'm sure. I mean, God, no. Thank God, it's not me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm, yeah, I, I wouldn't want to have that pressure on me because I think sometimes the fashion industry is an inhuman industry for a designer to actually work. And you know, it's like that you're not a human being, which you are. But but you know, there's a lot of expectations. There's a lot of opinions. There's a lot of. Uh, um, advice of what it is that you're meant to be doing and I'm sure that he probably has had the same kind of you know mm. like we are expecting something and other people are expecting something of his DNA that what he's meant to be doing for, for Louis Vuitton and, and so forth uh, yeah it's hard I, I'm sure you know mm. I'm, I'm you know so what it, do you do you, it's you it's lock yourself inside and you make your brain work and you say just don't talk to me I, I guess that's what Nicholas did but I mean mm. how you have you the creative process that has to happen within six months. Yeah, you do, right? and and then you get criticised a lot by your team, and you, and you get you know you get advice, and and you get told that that this is not what you know. I think that this whole sort of like process of of getting things spot on and, and in the right sort of th there's so much out there, isn't there? I mean, yeah. if we're if we're honest, there's too much basically. Mm. If if, if we're com completely honest about you know compared to ten. 15 years ago, it, uh, there's endless shows, mm. there's endless people doing their own brands, there's the competition <laughs> is just endless uh, mm -hmm. of what it is that's going on and, and uh, uh, you know, and how do you always come up with something new? I have no idea mm. <laughs> sometimes, yeah. you know, it's and, and sometimes it's hit and miss, you know, you can find a fabric that you really fall in love with and it doesn't work mm. <laughs> and then you're fucked for, mm. for a whole <laughs> season. What's the answer because of the to it, do you think? Do we think that... Well, I think the answer is, I don't, I don't really know, because, uh, you know, now you, s you see all these new seasons. You, get, you have pre-fall, you've mm. got resort, you've got main collections, and then you've got mid-season drops, and you've got... It's like an endless, you know, like a mm. hamster running around in, in so and, and can't really it sort of get out of it. And I mean, you know, it's the same for journalists, I'm mm. sure. You know, you see journalists in Paris, I've just mm. been, and, and they're... Exhausted, Exhausted basically, yeah. you know, looking at all these collections and mm. trying to work out what's what. Mm. Uh, yeah, it, and 15 years ago there was two seasons, mm. which, yeah. and you know, fewer brands yeah. and, and fewer, fewer brands. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's true. I think people do get terrible fashion fatigue at the end. Yeah, and, and get horribly jaded, and and it's interesting that you know that Vuitton's the last show. And, uh, and, you know, Mark always put on a really big spectacular mm. and it was kind of, you know, this is the end. And this was, I don't know, maybe they, I don't know if they'll carry on keeping Vuitton well, at, at We wouldn't the expect end. a train or, or a lift or no, because that's no. not, Nicola is, no. is but I mean, his shows in the Rue Cassette were yeah, 250 tiny. people yeah. on little, yeah. you know, white yeah. uh, patent uh, benches. Yeah. So this is already yeah. humongous. But maybe it's too much pressure. Uh, yeah, but what I like is that he didn't make yeah. it into no, something absolutely. like that. Mm. That's yeah. not him, yeah. you know. He would not do the supermarket, the yeah. Yeah, yeah, Chanel yeah. supermarket. But maybe maybe Chanel could go the, the, end, the end, 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 end. Yeah. I yeah. was expecting <laughs> that he would use a different location, actually. Really? Yeah. 
this is big. Well, they have a lot of people to invite, but this is big. Yeah. Mm. Mm. He managed yeah. to do it his way in a big mm. location. Mm. I don't know. Did you notice how it was nice that you were seeing the same look Crossing yeah. several yeah. times? Yeah. Yeah. But I think it, yeah, I think it's interesting that idea of, of theatre to, to close to close it all off because I think that became part of Mark's thing, doesn't it? It was doing a show to, yeah, doing something a bit exuberant. I think it's an interesting point about maybe the, the place for Chanel is to kind of Mm. kick everyone's spirits back up before they go home and, and actually this yeah it's an interesting point he used to open the week mm. when before they changed the yeah. calendar yeah, yeah, it was yeah, thursday yeah. morning at 9 mm. 30 yeah. and that was practically yeah. the first mm. main show so yeah. it was really the opposite you know mm. yeah which would probably i don't know suit this more because then you kind of you know you've got a flavor of the week mm. ahead you know why you know why we told was the last show of the calendar because Mark was doing, oh, because he was doing, he was doing New York, York so yeah. it was the first one yeah. of the first in New York. Yeah, he so he could do, yeah. yeah. That it was, was exactly why. Interesting that Mark was in Paris this week. Uh, oh, doing, was he? Yeah, he was um, promoting his new oh, yeah, beauty through. beauty mm. line. Yeah, he um, was top and I, I like the fact that he's gone on and he's, you know, Mark's doing Mark Jacobs, mm. and mm. actually, in ultimately, Nicola wants to do his own line. Mm. And I don't know, you sort of wonder how, you know, how he's <laughs> going to work his way through this. Do we want to see him do his own line? Because to go back to what Peter was saying, I think there's something really great about seeing the most talented, kind of creative, and it's a, it's a really sort of meaningless word in some ways, but conceptual designer in one of the most mighty fashion houses. It's kind of how fashion should be. And it's I a agree. shame to see people think that they've only succeeded. Like, this isn't success. It will only yeah. be success oh, yeah. when it's his own yeah. name. Mm. Yeah, no, um, it's uh, just because I was, you know, reading mm. that was. What, what he wants to, to do. do yeah. I don't know. And I mean, it must be for a designer to have your own name on your brand. Mm. You know, that must be the ultimate. Well, I, I don't know. Uh, would you rather have your brand? Well, I, think, <laughs> I think. You're like, I just want to yes, go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> could have. He still really wanted to do that. I yeah. mean, he's a wealthy man. He's yeah. so many people yeah. behind offering to back him. Mm. He took this because he thinks that's what he should do, mm. probably. I, he, if he really wanted to do it, I mean, you have young mm. designer, mm. totally penniless, who managed to do it. Mm. He has mm. the, you know, the network and the mm. money and the mm -hmm. power to do mm. it. So I think he believes in the fact that he can do this. And I'm mm. sure that it will, be go, it will be going more futuristic. But he was right not to do it immediately, mm. because mm. he would have been arrogant, no? You're the expert, the, the <laughs> <laughs> historian. <laughs> the, well, I don't know. I mean, I think it's really great that he is at Vuitton, as mm. you were saying. You yeah. know, to have someone like him there, it's not the obvious. I mean, obviously, everybody's rumbling about it for ages. But yeah. you know, two years ago, if you'd said that, it wasn't completely it's obvious. obvious. So yeah. it's actually great to have someone who is a bit different and a bit avant-garde. Mm. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. at, at this big major mm. house, and I think that will make mm. for interesting. Mm fashion you know? yeah um but yeah i think maybe you know as you were sort of referring to mark after vuitton mm. and it will be interesting to see how long he stays or you know mm -hmm. what he does afterwards mm -hmm. i think that would be yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah to talk about the vuitton code you know it's a really simplistic one but we think a lot about things like travel and it's something kim jones i think always risks on in a very interesting way does that does this seem to fit with that does this feel more about Vuitton as, as a brand. Are you seeing that, Mima? Or are, you, or are you just seeing it as guess, yeah? You just love it, you just want to buy it. <laughs> no, I'm trying not to see it. I mean, I see, I see Nicola in the fact that there is one point of view, mm. you know, that shape of the skirt or whatever, you know, there is one, probably, there are probably two stories maximum, mm. that's very him. There is some Vuitton in the sense that there's a clin d'oeil to the past in a few. Mm things in here. I don't know, I haven't seen it from close, but mm. I, I don't even know what to think actually. But um, it's, it is, it's certainly not Balenciaga, you know, yeah, it's certainly yeah. not what he would have done for Balenciaga. So mm. there must be some Vuitton in there mm. and there mm. some Alma and, and AP bags there. There's mm. some classic Vuitton stuff actually on the catwalk. So see that orange bag? Yeah. That's a modern take of the Alma the bag, bag, I yeah. think. Yeah. Mm. So, and I think the A shape, it's a little bit yeah. Vuitton somehow, mm. I don't know why, yeah. I yeah, see I it see, Vuitton, yeah. Yeah. but then Vuitton didn't do yeah. fashion in the 40s, so how mm. would yeah. I know? But I think these very graphic lines, uh, mm. something about yeah. Vuitton, I don't know, there's something mm. 
there in that, you know, the yeah. black line mm. going down the middle of that dress. Right. And I think if Vuitton has this kind of travel heritage, I mean, this girl definitely looks like she's, you know, she's on the go. Mm. Yeah. She's moving. Mm. She's mm. she's a woman of the world. Mm. I think the leathers and also the, the sort of roll necks and mm. the little jackets and things, mm. there's, there's something about a classic, I, I don't know, a, a sort of feeling of maybe Hermes or something yeah. worked mm. through it. Um, but it's very French, it's definitely. Yeah, yeah. And, his too. and yeah. as Thompson was saying, it's real clothes. Mm. And that's what probably we don't need because of I was saying on mm. this panel another time that it's probably only ten or fifteen percent of their of their turnover, but ten percent of four billion mm. it's a lot of million. Mm. So <laughs> it's not such a small mm -hmm. you know, yeah, a small set. So small. you know, it needs to be a real clothes as yeah. well. Mm. But a little bit modern, a little bit yeah. more modern and more desirable. Mm. And we think, do we think that sort of fulfills that brief in respect? Do you think the woman that buys a Vuitton bag, Vuitton luggage, will want to buy these clothes? I think yeah. so. I think it's very chic. Actually, I think, you know, looking at the colour palette and, and the beige, the rust, mm. the cream, it, it has some kind of, to me, well, we're talking about futuristic, but it's not, but, but something uh, like, um, almost like Danish furniture, like Arne Jakobsen furniture, mm. and it has this kind of timeless look to it almost, that you, you probably in five yeah. years time would still be wearing that, mm. that Mac from look 12 mm -hmm. and, and thinking, well mm. I'll be wearing it with these trousers from this season and mm. it still looks mm. new and fresh and, and chic. Mm. I think timelessness is such a good word because that's something he said in this, you know, the desire to, for timelessness. Does every designer not seek to create something timeless? Yeah. And, and this is to me, this is feels you're completely yeah. right. Think, that's what this is about. And I think with this level of luxury clothing, it's kind of a bit obscene to make something that's going to go out of fashion within right. a, a season. Which sometimes we see that he so did much. do with Balenciaga. It was yeah. very much mm. it was of that season, of that moment, yeah. and you couldn't really wear it again. Yeah, Whereas, I still wear I my George Floyd well, and my dark hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I still wear my great pieces, but there were some, I still wear there were some pieces yeah. in those collections yeah. that no, were No, you're really, right, there are some things you know, they were in the so air, last, the last was, season, yeah. Mm. But these pieces look yeah. much more, you know, you could wear that trench coat you know, yeah. forever. Mm. Exactly. And maybe that's yeah. the new excitement he's getting from a house like this, is not feeling like at somewhere like Balenciaga when, when everyone looked at it and the focus was so much on fashion that he can do something here that, is, that isn't really about that, it's not about seasons in that same way, it's about luxury. Mm. Mm -hmm. And I guess that is quite, quite an interesting brief. But do we think, we, it's interesting that you talk about pieces that are very sort of seasonal, but a very, very high price point, because it wasn't just him at Balenciaga, that was, we see that so much, we've seen that so much, this Paris, you know, with some of the shows we were talking about before we went live, just, it feels so much like fashion's kind of bowing to the, the fast fashion pressures of the high street, trying to do stuff that will, that will sort Uncopyable. Of, yeah, but also that will go out of fashion within a season so people come back and buy more. And t I know you write a lot about you know, sustainability mm. and, and how that's mm. going to mm. work. Do you find it very frustrating to mm. see high fashion houses doing that Zara thing? Of Yeah, and I, I don't really see the point of it mm. fundamentally. I mean, it, you know, it's, it's just a quick kind of gimmick. I mean, we were talking about Moschino earlier. Mm. You know, I mean, that is... Don't make me start. <laughs> <laughs> but you know that was a collection it, it was you know it's about the here and now you almost have to have those bags right now yeah. by the time it comes to autumn winter you know you've seen it done it you've moved on mm. um so yeah i think it, it uh, I, I i just don't really see the point of mm. that you know mm. but it's funny what you say because i thought paris was not really that this season i mean there was a lot of expensive and and, and very luxurious fashion, there was a lot of creativity, but then take even the, the, the Givenchy uh, mm -hmm. show, it was extraordinarily wearable, much mm. more than usual, and, mm. and I don't see, don't see those coats and, and dresses going so out of fashion that you can't wear them anymore mm. in a year. So I, I don't think mm. they did that this season. This season so much. Uh, maybe yeah. Milan a little bit more, but I think mm, Paris yeah. was more mm. um, long term. Mm, yeah, uh, it was less yeah. challenging. Yeah, yeah. the yeah. Valentino show, yeah. I think. Yeah, was mm. everything seemed a bit more considered, I think. I mean, yeah. even like mm. Dior was incredibly. But even the Saint Laurent nice. little capes, I yeah. mean, mm. yes, the cape is very much in fashion, but. I've got capes from Lee from 10 years yeah. ago and, and yeah, you wear them and then you don't wear them anymore mm. and then you, mm. and, or if you are someone who really doesn't care and is stylish, you just wear whatever you want. And I think the fact that there is so many separates mm. 
mm. make you style the thing as you were saying you know mm. you can wear that mark next year with a different mm. pair of heels mm. or mm. I think it is more mm -hmm. considerate mm. You, you just you said the opposite so am mm. I wrong no no I agree with you. I think it's interesting actually hearing you speak about it because it gets me thinking about about designers who don't yeah who don't design for kind of I think the Jeremy Scott collection that we were talking about it feels very much like he's not dis designing for a Moschino woman he's not trying to get a committed shopper he's just trying to put those key pieces on certain people who love fashion yeah. but I think what's interesting with the designers that you're talking about you know you mentioned Givenchy but also this is it's it's trying to do what what Gesky has always done very well which is it's build someone who loves the brand and comes back every season it's kind of it treats your shop in a more respectful way because you're not just trying to kind of stick a piece on someone who likes all of fashion you're trying to get someone to come into your world and and buy it every season and i think to do that you need to create stuff that they can build and use as building blocks and i do Absolutely. find that quite interesting and also you can you can mix and match i mean more than ever this year we're able to mix and match expensive mm. with high street and because it's not, you know, that I was. I thought it was so boring, like two, three years ago, where everybody was wearing a dress, mm. that dress. Mm. It was now you've got accessories and and mm. things and layers, and I, and you can mix mm. literally mm. high street top shop with Balenciaga with the bits of Saint Laurent and a bit of Vuitton, which I think mm. is fantastic. Mm. And are we surprised that there's, there's the Saint Laurent element to it, though? Because the fashion press likes to be very critical of Saint Laurent, but is this a sign that you know Eddie's getting it right? Well, if there is, I think I think the interesting part of it is that it's French, mm. and and that's what I I kind of like. I, I, it's it's the same thing as if you're, you're talking about London being l what London designers do and what Paris does and New York mm. is is what they do. It, it's sort of kind of nice to get back to to. For, for me, from my point of view, uh, as a designer probably looking at it, t t something where it is that you're looking at these capitals of fashion mm -hmm. as being having their own DNA mm -hmm. and not sort mm -hmm. of blending into each other as some kind of big mixing bowl of, mm -hmm. of, uh, of, of pastry. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> well <done>. Which is... <laughs> <laughs> Do we feel that? Yeah. Do we all feel that that very sort of French identity to it? Yeah, and I think it's not so much. I don't think we could say that you know Hedy and Nicola are referencing each other at all. No, you know, I think that's. Not but so I, mm. I think I think that there's a spirit, a spirit that exactly. they share, and I think that's that. You know, it's it's a it's a woman. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's the moving on from the bourgeois, like what yeah. Stefano Pilati used to do for Saint Laurent was yeah. very bourgeois. I don't yeah. think it was ugly or wrong. Yeah. It was one mm. side of Mr. Saint Laurent and people were probably a bit bored of that. Mm. And Hedy brought it to a more rock and roll, younger, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. suitable for American kind of style. Mm -hmm. And this, I'm sure, Nicholas is not references Hedy. Don't even yeah. uh, think no, about no, no. that. No. However, he's in the same generation. He's a French man, very modern, very cultivated, mm -hmm. very cultural. And, and, and that's his new rock and roll mm -hmm. French yeah. woman. Mm -hmm. and yeah. You know. yeah, and just the fact, you know, the hair and the makeup is completely kind of, you know, it's it's very real. Mm. It's, mm. you know, there's no big... It's a white canvas. No. Yeah, mm. yeah. Mm. And I guess to, to talk a little bit about luxury, what does this tell us about about how how women want to buy luxury and what they want to say? Because it feels to me like it's it's that end of wanting to look polished or or sort of different, it's just people want to look really, really great and, and it almost fit in luxury that kind of blends in seamlessly, which I guess is what you were saying, I mean, with mm. stuff that you can blend into your wardrobe, but this doesn't seem to me to be about standing out or shouting. It seems to be very much for the wearer. Mm. But there's also a level of sophistication, I think, that mm. you mm. see in this, and we're talking about a French, you know, code or, or mm. recognising that, and I think that's what is done so well. Mm -hmm. There, you know, this looks at one you think it's so wearable, but actually, it's it's actually quite sophisticated. And mm -hmm. I think you know the mm -hmm. same with uh, at Saint Laurent. People say, oh, it's very rock and roll. It's a young client, but there is a level of sophistication there. It's just that when I you go see when you go to the store, you see yeah, it. Yeah. exactly. It's like, yeah. Yeah. Wow, Incredible. these yeah, are yeah. you know you see beautiful clothes. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. But that's a new kind of luxury, isn't it? Where there's a kind of element where. If you saw it across the street, you perhaps wouldn't go, oh, she's wearing something really expensive. It, it's that, that more intimate collection, connection with your clothes. When you're wearing it, you, you understand how fabulous the fabrics mm -hmm. are. And if someone's very close to you, they mm -hmm. can see it. And I, I think that's it's quite more interesting. Intimate. Mm -hmm. and, there yeah. is a, and there is a level of comfort that it's coming back, as I said before, it's less costumey and theatrical. Mm -hmm. 
that's very s Mar Jacobs yeah. for Witton, mm -hmm. Luke yeah, 31. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a reference yeah. to Mar Jacobs, right? Mm. Yeah. But anyway, so th if you see in every show there was movement in the fabrics and mm. there's yeah. far from the body, there's mm. it's comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can move, you can yeah. dance in it, mm. like Kea Cara did on the Stella McCartney catwalk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if you saw it. Yeah. Was, you know, it's like there is movement, there is mm. comfort, there is. It's for you. Yeah. Mm. But right? not that this looks remotely Topshop or High Street. I mean, these clothes oh look no. very super luxe. Oh yeah. Mm. Rich. Yeah. I mean, you can see that. Yeah. You can see yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh mm. God, you yeah. wouldn't think. Mm. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> it can be copied. <laughs> yeah. Mm. No, absolutely. So we're impressed. It was worth getting up for. Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah? Sure. Yes. Yeah. Good. Well, thank you so much for popping in at this ungodly hour. <laughs> Should we give him a round of applause? Because yes. it's yeah. a big moment. Well done, Nicola. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.